Hello and welcome back to the tutorial for Year 5 Science Unit 1 Earth and Space Part 2. I'm Megan Latchford and I'm a design lead for Primary Science, Geography and History at Art Curriculum Plus. This video will explain how you can adapt the lessons in this unit to support and stretch your pupils and highlight any trips or investigations to be aware of. A great resource to use to adapt pupil activities in this unit is the online ebook workbook. To access the ebook workbook for this unit, you'll need to log in to Oxford AL, select the year group and subject you want, use the drop down options, and the first item on the list is the ebook workbook. This is an online exact copy of the pupil physical workbook. Use the arrows to scroll through the pages and you can find all the units for year five within this ebook, just like in the physical copy. Select the activity you want to adapt by using the snipping tool and highlighting that section. You may be familiar with the snipping tool, but if not, it's a tool that allows you to copy something from your screen and paste it somewhere else. You can access it by searching in the toolbar, like in this picture, or by pressing Windows Shift S simultaneously. Then you hold down click and drag the highlighted rectangle over the area or activity you want to copy, in this case from the ebook workbook. You can now press paste and that section will be pasted onto the document you want. Sometimes you may find that publisher works best and other times it could be Word. And from here, you can make any adaptations you want. Every lesson starts with a knowledge quiz except for lesson one, and they can be implemented in a variety of ways which entirely depend on what works best for your class. They are an important step to check for understanding and to address any misconceptions, so try not to miss them out. We have found from teacher feedback that most teachers teach these quizzes with people sat at desks independently answering the questions, and this is great if this works for your pupils and keep doing it if so. But there are other options if you feel this isn't the best method for your class. You could read through the questions and options as a whole class and go through each question and answer one by one, breaking it down into bite sized chunks. Another option is to start the year pupils answering the questions as a class by showing a number on their hands, for example, one to four. To keep a track of answers, you keep a record on the general consensus the class has come to, or even make a note in the work that you've kept aside as a teacher copy. As the year progresses, you may wish to make these knowledge quizzes more independent. The aim of a knowledge quiz is to assess the new learning from the previous lesson, and you can adapt this to any method which best suits your class. Now I'm going to talk through how you can adapt activities in the pupil workbook. We don't have time to go through every activity in this unit, so I've selected one or two from each lesson. The adaptations we look at here are suggestions and you should use what works best for your pupils. But hopefully this is a useful starting point for you and will start a bank of adaptation ideas. In this activity, pupils need to use the reading text to answer the retrieval questions below. Any adaptations you use in your reading lessons could definitely be used here and for any retrieval activities from text. Here, you could highlight the keywords in the text and also in the questions. If you need to give a high level of support, you could print off the answers as labels for pupils to read, sort through and stick as the correct answer. You can stretch pupils by asking them challenging questions such as, why can't humans live on the sun? In lesson two, pupils need to use the data in the table to label the planets in the retrieval question. You can replace the table in the workbook by using the table from the teacher slides and reorganising the planets so they're in distance order from the sun. You could also highlight the relevant column so people are directed to where to look. And you could also take it a step further and partially complete the activity by labelling some of the planets. 
stretch pupils by asking them questions such as, if you could, which planet would you live on and why? Lesson three uses the same table as in lesson two. Pupils need to draw a bar chart to show the number of moons each planet has. You could support pupils by adapting the bar chart in ways that perhaps you have previously done in maths lessons. You could again highlight the relevant column and you could even colour code the highlighted data and planets. Or you could partially complete the activity as a model. Stretch pupils by asking them to answer a challenge question such as, Mars is known as the red planet. Does this mean it's a hot or cold planet? How do you know? In lesson four, pupils need to shade and write on the image of the planet Earth to show the different times of day. You could support pupils by highlighting the key words in the text. You could create answer boxes on the image to show pupils where to write their answers. Or you could even partially complete the activity to give pupils more time to be successful with fewer questions. Stretch pupils by asking them to complete a challenge activity such as explain why you label the earth the way you did. In lesson five, pupils are asked to draw the phases of the moon using the images on the left hand side into the diagram. Support pupils by copying and printing the phases of the moon to be stuck in. This could be done using the workbook or slide resources, and this is a method that could be done for many other activities also. To support pupils further, you could also add more moons to the diagram already. Stretch pupils in this activity by removing all the phases of the moon and asking pupils to complete the entire diagram themselves. In some lessons, like in lesson six here, there will be larger areas of text for pupils to read through. You could use the ports or adaptations you have in English and reading lessons here. You could highlight key areas of text support. Or you could print the text out using the corresponding slides as a separate sheet and enlarge the font. You could even also highlight this text. Stretch pupils by asking them a challenge question such as, do you believe the geocentric or heliocentric model is correct and why? Every lesson finishes with two exit questions. These are not in books and are done as a class. Pupils could use their fingers, like we suggested as an option for the knowledge quizzes to answer. And you can see here, they are added to the slide as support for pupils. Besides reading through the unit resources before you begin teaching, for every unit, there are elements that will need to be planned in advance by the class teacher. You could plan an engaging hook. You could create some artwork as a class. You need to print off any additional resources. Not every lesson will have these, so make sure you check before you teach. You also may need to gather resources for specific lessons, such as lessons with investigations. Check for this using the unit planning guide for this unit. Hopefully you now feel confident about accessing and teaching this unit. Any questions, please send to primarymastery at artcurriculumplus.org.uk and we welcome all feedback to ensure that these resources stay as supportive as possible for you and your classrooms.